Okay, what's going on boys? Snow Guides here. Welcome back to another video. We're going to go over the new feature set. What's new inside the game? Cross-platform, confirmed, hyper motion, the Women's World Cup, Men's World Cup, everything like that. The World Cup in the game itself. All the information I'm going to go through in this video. Um, so it's going to be a long video, so probably enjoy this more of a podcast vibe if you're on the way to work. Um, but let's go straight into it. So the information's here on the website. Um, I'll leave a link down below. There's also a trailer which um, is released, and to be honest, the graphics look absolutely insane in 4K. I'd highly recommend watching that if you haven't already. This video should be released in 2K, um, but I would recommend watching that. There's a couple of Easter eggs in that one as well. Um, you can probably see some of the new features. A very interesting new feature as well is the free kicks one I was looking at when I was watching the trailer for the first time. Um, the free kicks actually looks really, really nice. And of course, the graphical updates you can see. I'm sure many of you guys have seen this image over here. This screenshot right over there, probably in a the thumbnail of the video as well. Um, so the new features are just put in there as well. And then what we've done is, um, we'll, I'll make a video on that separately and what I think about it. Uh, but this will just be for the information of FIFA 23 in total. You can actually pre-order the game now um, and it's coming out on September September the 30th. Um, and you can put, and EA Play Pro members can play from the 27th September. Now, EA Play Pro, unless they've changed it this year, from last year, you could play the game for a limited amount of time on EA Play Pro. Now there's cross-platform and there's not just old gen. So technically you can play the game earlier for an limited amount of time unless they stay otherwise from the 27th. Um, I think with the other ones, you have to you know buy the thing, the PlayStation, the EA Now, whatever it's called, PlayStation, no, sorry, PlayStation Now, um, the EA app, I forgot exactly what it's called, EA Play, sorry, I forgot the name of that. Um, and you can basically play it for like, I think it's 20 hours or 10 hours. It depends year on year. Um, but EA Play, if they do it correctly, um, you can probably play it a bit earlier. But we'll get into that in, in a bit, a few more data. So you can pre-order it as well. Hyper Motion 2, more information is coming out on the 27th of July. And they're going to be progressively adding more information on. Um, introducing, of course, women's football and, of course, a double World Cup. Both the Women's FIFA World Cup and the World Cup in Qatar. So I think the World Cup in Qatar is in December. And the Women's World Cup, I believe, it's next year in July. And that is, of course, included in the game. The no additional cost. Um, it's been a big... It's would be a big year for me, actually. Because I'm not actually... I mean, for everyone. But for me in particular, because I've not actually played... You know, where there's two different... Well, we don't know how they're going to do it. But two different game modes, like it was in FIFA 18. Be interesting to see how that kind of transpires. Cross-platform, of course, that's confirmed. There's some differences. The markets are different from PC and consoles. Um, I'll go over that as well in, in a second. And what's coming new? So today is the 21st when you're watching this. It is a Thursday. The new gameplay feature is coming out on the 27th. And Hypermotion 2 will be coming out on the same date. Information regarding that. I think it will be like a pitch note style. Um, career mode on the 1st, August the 1st. The match day experience on August the 5th. And August the 8th, Pro Clubs and Volta will be coming out. Information regarding that. And of course, the one that I'm waiting for the most is of course FIFA Ultimate Team, which is then August the 11th. We also do have some new heroes, Park G Sung, Yaya Torre and Carvalho, um, which will go over as well. And of course, if you pre-order by the 21st of August, you do get a FIFA World Cup Foot Hero Player item starting November the 11th. So you'll get that on November the 11th if you pre-order it now before August the 21st. Um, but let's go through the information. They've, of course, got some new ambassadors here. Of course, everyone knows now they've got Sam Kern, Kern and Mbappe. Um, a good way going forward with the covers as well, especially the women's uh, introduction into the Women's World Cup in the FIFA as well. That's going to be interesting. A double World Cup um, in Mbappe. And you've also got Vinicius Jr., Hugo Song, Al Alfonso Davies, um, Katarina Macario. Um, probably butchered that. Apologies. Uh, Chloe Kelly, um, Jack Grealish, Jude Bellingham, Virgil van Dijk, Kai Havertz, Pulisic, and of course, Jao Felix. Apologies if I mispronounced any of those names. Um, so these are new Foot 23 ambassadors and some of the existing ones as well um, that were in them last year. Um, you can always have a quick glance for that. I'll leave that down below in the description. Um, if you go to the Foot Hero, so the frequently asked questions. When I was a kid, I say friendly asked questions. Um, to celebrate the FIFA World Cup um, men's and um, each... Old, so, so it's only for the men's. Each new Foot Hero item in FIFA 20 Ultimate will have two versions of their Foot Hero item, a base version and a World Cup version. The base version will recognize a memorable moment in their career, while the FIFA Club World, World Cup will celebrate a key contribution to the international stage. Interesting. So is that how is this going to be like a, a live card or the way they're going to do it? Or um, when a FIFA World Cup release, so they're going to release it um, August 11th. So if you pre order the game now, you won't get that pack till August 11th. Everyone always wonders, where's that pack when I get the game? It normally takes it to August 11th. 
Um, Will the Foot Heroes of Foot 23 have the same rating as their base card? Um, they'll have an improved rating depending on their memorable international moment. If I pre order the FIFA 23 Ultimate Edition, um, when will I receive it? You'll receive it by the 11th. And how will I receive it? It should be de delivered to your packs um, on August 7th. I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. We do have Yaya Toy, Park G Sung, and Ricardo Carvalho. And there's more foot heroes to be revealed throughout the summer. I mean, listen, I want David Villa to be there, of course. If David Villa is there, I'm not going to sell that guy. That guy is going to be in my team until the end of FIFA. Um, one of my favorite players. And this is one I was saying. So EA Play... Um, Basically, what it was, EA Play is a way that you can play the game early. So the game she comes out, let's say hypothetically on the 30th, if it is, or 27th, you can play it a few days earlier. Now, EA Play Pro on PC, which is a separate thing, EA Play Pro, is that you can play it for an unlimited amount of time. So I'll explain to you. This is very, very important because you're going to decide what console to get. Okay. First of all, early access, you can play the game earlier for up to 10 hours with no commitment. It costs about £5 and you can purchase EA Play. With that, you get 10% off the game. So you can get 10% off the game. And of course, it will include um, discounts on FIFA points and season passes if you do purchase that. And of course, you unlock some member rewards like recurring ultimate team items, season of Ultra, a power and coins and seasonal boost. Um, I don't know if there's any others. Um, let's have a look over here quickly. All right, there's more information here. You can, of course, browse that. Um, but I'm just going to be focusing, of course, just primarily on the main bit. So, yes, EA Play. Um, what I want to say is it depends what you're playing in, what generation. Now, this is important. If you're playing on Xbox or you're playing on um, PlayStation, EA Play, basically, you can play the game for 10 hours before the launch. After that, you can't play anymore. Uh, you can unlock member rewards. You can basically play the game, do whatever you want for 10 hours. What I'd recommend is play the game. If you're going to go downstairs with a cup of tea or have a sandwich, make sure you turn off the game. Don't just close the application. Um, don't just leave it there because time will run out. Time will tick. But only on the Origin the EA Play app, so this is not on Stadia, I believe, is you can play the game for a limited amount of time instead of 10 hours. So if you're going to consider cross-platform this year, you may want to consider EA Play Pro. That's what I would say. Um, don't forget, you can't play EA Play for months and you can't play on PC, then go to PS after. Um, you can't transfer that account over, so just do bear that in mind. Um, but you can play it. Um, so, yes, early access starts September 27th, so I believe the official release would be the 30th. You do get 4,800 FIFA points, a one-to-watch item, um, a, foot, uh, a World Cup here on the 11th, and a few other stuff as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I believe the, the release date would be the 30th, from my understanding, from what I can tell. So let's go over this. There's a lot of lot of things to read. I'm not going to go over it too much uh, because I suppose you can read this yourself. But you do have a FIFA World Cup mode or edition. I keep saying mode because I don't know how they're going to do it this year. But in FIFA 18, um, they had, for those who remember, they had a World Cup mode. Um, it's going to be interesting because this World Cup is in December, whereas the World Cup in FIFA 18 was at a different time. So it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of pushes into the game. And of course, they've got the Women's World Cup in July. So I don't know. It says as post-launch content updates at no additional cost. Maybe um, we'll know what to wait for then. Introducing, of course, Women's Club Football. Um, uh, plays women's club football for the first time in EA Sports Football FIFA history as the Barclays FA Women's Super League and Division 1 um, Arcama come out on FIFA 23 launch and that of course would be with Hypermotion 2 and gameplay of course we have cross-platform which we'll go into a second Hypermotion 2 and more gameplay features and of course we have Ultimate Team now this is what they've confirmed um, there's going to be a new revamped chemistry system to give you a whole new way to play and build your dream squad. That is something I'm looking very interesting too, because as you guys know that when I make my squad builders, I don't really worry about chemistry too much, uh, whereas other people do. I suppose you can say the masses, um, they will not play a play on seven chemistry, like when fullbacks first started, everyone was like, whoa, is this like a negative thing? Um, but... Um, they're going to change system. So how's it going to be now? Is it still going to be chemistry links? Can you still get a squad link? Is that going to go completely? Who knows? And of course, there's the icons on Foot Heroes. Um, interesting to see what new icons are going to be putting in as well. Career mode, match day experience. Um, from And uh, what's this? Hyper-realistic pitch services enhanced. Then we saw that as well on the trailer. 
and Pro Clubs and Volta. It's an interesting set from there. Um, I'm presuming as time goes on, more information will come out here. So I'll update that when the time comes. Um, we do have a forum where there'll be some more information where you, I suppose you can say how to, well, how to give feedback. So you want to give feedback here, you can sign up to the EA forums as well. Actually, a lot of them. Not that many comments. I was expecting that maybe a lot more, but of course there's some more updates here being as well. Um, so if you want to stay tuned to the forums, you can do over there. Then we have a positive player chart. Um, our commitment to positive play at Electronics, uh, Electronic Arts, we believe in power of positive play. Being part of a gaming community should be fun, fair, and of course, safe for all. Um, like with most opportunities, these are the guidelines. Um, what I would say, though, is... Um, I've been getting a lot of people saying to me that um, they're getting a lot of messages from people when you're playing online. My best advice is just turn messages off. Um, I know a lot of people have been saying this, but I just think if, if it is something that affects you, um, just turn your messages off. It's the best advice I can give you. Um, I found that from most of the time, people don't really mean it. They just get frustrated inside the game. But I think, of course, some people will take it too far. So if you want the people to take it too far, of course, do report them they do take it too far um but i would say um just turn off your messages probably the best solution to it have your messages set to friends only is what i'd recommend um but i think yeah that is that and um i think that is pretty much it we do have the cross play information which we, we're going to go through now i don't think there's anything else on the website news and media there's a pitch notes hang on actually you know what there's a pitch notes and email up let's have a quick glance at these actually so do the bitch pitch notes that is for FIFA 23, so we'll read that now. That's a cross-platform one. We've got the latest news. Um, there's nothing really much here apart from the FIFA 20 release dates. So we know, okay, so here's the full release dates. Here it is. Okay, so the game is coming out, the standard edition, which is the normal version, is coming out on the 30th of September. Ultimate Team's on the 27th, and EA Play Pro and EA Early Access is on the 27th. So, if you're on the consoles, you can play it off to 10 hours on the 27th. If you're on PC, you can play it for a limited amount of time on the 27th. Um, and, of course, cross-platforms on the same generation. So, if you're on PS5, by the way, you can't play on someone on the PS4. Remember that. So, you have to basically play on that version. Are you going to be able to get two versions of the game like they do normally? That's going to be pretty interesting as well. But those are, of course, the key release dates. And then you have some more information. Um, I believe it's the same one, which we're going to go over in a second. The same one again. And, of course, you can sign up to EA Sports FIFA News. If you just want um, the latest news, you can sign up here. Put your email list in over there. And, yeah, so this, the, there's two things here. There's a cross-play. I, th I believe this is the same thing. A quick glance, make sure it's the same thing. Okay, so it's just... Um, a design difference okay let's go over this so what this is um again i'll leave this down below in the description but feel free of course um to uh, just listen um, if you are listening to this on your way to work so um i'm gonna quick go over the main bit so following the cross play test in fifa 22 and online seasons and online fans i'm sure many of you guys have seen we're expanding on the availability of cross play for more game modes for 23 as well as increasing number of included platforms in fifa 23 cross platform will be available for players on the same platform generation ps5 xbox series s and x stadia and pc version for 23 will be cross platform compatible with each other and ps4 and xbox one version for 23 will be cross-platform with each other. So it looks like the PC version will not be getting its own version. Like, you know, PC, the PC version right now, FIFA 22 is the old gen. So it looks like you're just going to be forced to play new gen. So on the new gen consoles, will you get backwards compatibility as well? I hope they do that, to be honest, because um, sometimes I want to play with a friend that doesn't have a PS5. FIFA 23 cross-platform will be available at launch in foot divisions, except, except co-op. Foot Champions, Foot Ultimate Team Online Draft, Foot Online Friendly, except co-op, Foot Player Friend, Online Friendlies, Online Seasons, except co-op, and a virtual Bundesliga competitive game where that would be available for players in Germany. Cross, um, cross play is initially enabled for all players when launching for 520 for the last time, provided the platform settings allow it for it, and can be opted out as well. Okay, so that means Rivals, Foot Champions, and Ultimate Team. Now, this is a good thing, because I know... I'll give an example. I know people on Xbox and I know depending on where you're from, um, I've got friends in the US, for example, and they always tell me that they have an issue finding a game late at night. 
The benefit is, is that if you have a cross-platform, you've got a higher and a more pool of players to choose from. Um, so that's another interesting feature as well. We want to ensure our product innovation is delivered at the, is at quality and because of the technical intricacies of implementing cross-play modes that pair plays together, such as pro clubs, will not feature cross-play at this time. So no co-op and no pro clubs. Interesting. Um, so we do have a little bit of image here. Let's have a quick zoom in. So here you can see against uh, friends. In fact, you know what? You can just have a pause this video, have a quick screenshot and see. And don't forget, all co-op modes have been excluded um, as well from uh, cross-play and so have pro clubs. So that is actually... Very interesting. So as I said, you can't go backwards, but you can stay forwards. Uh, you can't go from next gen to old gen and old gen to next gen. But if you're both on PS5 and Xbox Series S, of course, you can play each other as well. And you can see the more information over there as well. Pretty interesting. Um, and no, and no cross-platform for PS. Oh no, misread that. Um, with it, um, expansion or cross-play, FIFA 23 will see multiple groups groupings of the foot transfer market. Now, this is actually something that's very interesting. And the reason why I bring this up is on Footbin, if you search for a player, let's just say hypothetically speaking, I search for a player, I'm just going to choose Ronaldo, okay? There's a difference in price in the PC market as a person. Now, in fact, the best way I can put it, if I do PC, you can see, well, to be honest, Ronaldo's price has almost been the same. Let's just say we go for Gold Ronaldo here. Gold Ronaldo, if we look at the price, um, it's not it's not too much difference, but there is a difference. And certain players, um, I believe it's icons, if I'm not mistaken, have a different price, different pricing, or some of the icons... Um, there's a different pricing rate. So people find, that, as you can see, when the game launches, that on PC it's exponentially more expensive and then kind of ease off and, you know, matches together. So the markets are going to be different. Um, so let's have a read. We'll share more information further down. Additionally, we're planning a new, a new social widget called EA Social. EA Social helps bridge the gap between platforms for cross-play and allows for players further ease of access when finding, adding, or playing with their local platforms. Interesting. Okay, it's an interesting one. With this foot cut of 23, the market will be, tra will be expanded into a cross-platform cross functionality. The foot transfer market will be combined within pools of platforms with the exception of PC and Switch, which will continue to have their own separate markets. Okay, so the Switch, so Nintendo Switch and a PC version will have their own markets. Very interesting. I presume they did that deliberately because the PC market is much more expensive or maybe because they intend for more players to be on PC. Um, or maybe because, you know, from a from a financial standpoint, I suppose it's quite beneficial for them because people might play the game on the, li the limited version early, open packs and then and go to the console. Maybe, I don't know. Shared foot transfer, you have PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and then you have Stadia. Um, this means that all the platforms above were able to share the same market. So if you were a table, let's say you were to list for another 500k, hypothetically speaking, on PS5, um, any in a PS4, you would probably see that on that market as well. Or you will, should I say. But it's the interesting one. Individual foot transfer market. So PC is pool one and switches pool, pool two. This means that the above platforms don't share the platform with each other. Okay, so if you play on the Switch, which I don't know if, how much, I mean, handheld devices of, of a large majority, maybe they have a lot of player base, but if you play on a PC, for example, that's its own separate market. If you play on a Switch, that's its own separate market as well. So will players be way more expensive on the Switch and PC, which is what will be very, very interesting. For myself, obviously, as a coach as well, I have to play on every single platform. I don't play on a Switch just yet. I don't think I've ever had anyone ask me um, to coach on a Switch before. But yeah, I play all versions, PS4, PS5, old gen, new gen, um, Xbox, Series X and S, and of course, PC. Um, but leaderboards, with FIFA 23, um, there'll be some okay this is actually very interesting there's going to be some differences in leaderboards okay so the foot division rivals leaderboard with implementation of crossplay the elite 200 this is important for those of you that are challenging and competing the elite top 200 will have a global leaderboard you can view this leaderboard when you have crossplay enabled but you can hold between the global leaderboard and the same platform one interesting is qualifiers just going to be on ps5 though this year as you can see, you can see it there. Within division rivals, players have opted 
out of the cross-platform community of the leaderboard. Okay, fine. All screenshots um, in this pitch notes are for informational purposes only taken for in development version of 23. Okay. When it, when the global version, when crossplay is enabled, is PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series X, Stadia, and the PC. And then local leaderboards would be PS4, PS5. Okay, so PlayStation is grouped together. So I thought maybe the new gens would be grouped together, but no, it says so. Local, so if you're on PS5 and you make it and you choose a local leaderboard, you only see the PlayStation, same with Xbox, same with Stadia, and same with PC. Interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting how qualifiers will work this year. You know, is there going to be a global leaderboard for qualify, qualifiers across platform, or would it be just on the native platform itself? Um, I think it would be just on PS5. That's an interesting one. Um, the same rules applies for Division Rivals leaderboard. Now, this is going to be interesting with more players in Division Rivals. The sliders, I suppose you can argue, changing. Um, the player is able to switch between global. Okay, fine. So you can see your total match earnings uh, globally or current in your local one. Squ so for those that play squad battles, the top 200 squad battles has been removed. And, and as there is a single reward tier for this group. Wait, so they removed top 200 from squad battles? Unless they've made a global top 200. That's interesting. I mean, I hope they haven't removed it. I mean, I don't play squad battles, to be honest. Um, as some of you guys know, it's probably the only game mode that I don't play. I think it's probably the... It's interesting. I don't really play against AI that much. Um, very rarely do I. I don't really enjoy it. So, well, I don't mind it, but it's more tedious, I would say. More fun to play against, of course, a fellow human as well. Um, but interesting, um, I don't really play squad battles, it doesn't really affect me as much, but if you do play squad battles, do bear that in mind. EA Social Widget has now uh, been created to allow players to search, add and send invites. Okay, this is good for cross-platform. I think this EA Social Widget can be done by the following prompts inside the screen. Um, let's just skip this, you have a friends tab. Okay, so I suppose um, you can add someone from the friend. While two friends lists are unique, both are displayed. Okay. Okay, let's have a read this. As you can see above, so you can see online friends, you have two players, you can see what platform they're on as well. So you can search for a player, I presume you can search via platform, which is probably the easiest way. As you can see from above, there are a few unique indicate identifiers in the friends list. Most of the you see the online, this online offline friends, platform indicators, and a cross platform, cross play incompatibility icon if the player is not legible, play together. And that means they either disabled the settings or of course, if you're like on PS5 and they're on P and they're like on PS4, because of course you can't do cross platform between old gen and new gen. The online offline friends functionality is similar to FIFA 22, with the exception of ordering the friends, of ordering your friends, local pa platform friends will appear at the top of your list with all cross platforms appearing afterwards. So it'll be all the online guys and then it'll be, for example, all the local platforms so if you're on ps5 you see all your ps5 friends first then if someone's on xbox you'll see them and then you'll see everyone online after that um, which i presume offline local platform friends will display their platform name applicable platform icon if the friend is offline hang on if the offline friend is the one who has been added via the ea network you will display their ea account id with the ea themed icon interesting does everyone even know the ea ids it's a very interesting one. Um, you can add via the EA Network ID. Platform indicator icons help represent which platform. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so whichever icon you have. Um, the icons will represent opening and engaging with EA Social. Okay, so it's pretty much self-explanatory. Please be able to see additional information once they have someone on their friends list. Online status. Um, so you can see only if it's only EA types cross platforms enabled. The lobby status, so that, see if they're inside a game or not. Invite compatibility and access to play action. So you can mute them, mute them as a friend. Of course, they beat you on FIFA. <laughs> Block or report. Okay, interesting. Game invites. Okay, within EA Social, a player will be able to send and receive invites from players on the same platform as well as cross platform invites. That's pretty much the same. So it's like a central area. So you won't, you won't have to go into the PlayStation menus if you're on PS and then somehow find a different way. All the invites can be done through this creator hub, which I wish the button to actually open it. I don't even know. I presume it's a touchpad or maybe it's the options button. Or maybe it's just R2. I think by default it should be R2. 
When an invite is sent from the same platform, players will receive the standard specific invite information. Okay, it'd be interesting to see how the invite invitation happens inside the game. Um, at the same time, additional invitation also sent to EA Social. No on-screen notifications will appear for the EA Social invite when it's being sent from the same fat platform, but players will be able to find an invite within a game invite. Okay, a red indicator badge will appear on EA Social widget, which is found on the bottom right-hand corner. The red informs the player they've been invited. Okay, so on the right-hand side, you would see, you'll see if it goes red, you'll see you've been invited. Um, otherwise, you will not know. Otherwise, you won't get an actual notification through the EA Social platform unless you're on the same platform. So like if you're on PS5, you get the PS5 native message on the top right corner. Um, it appears that you you receive that, and you, but you don't get it if you're not part. Hang on. Yeah, so if you're on PS5 and you invite a friend, you will still see that notification in the top right because it's in the native you're on the same platform. But let's say you're on Xbox and I'm on PS5. Um, you send me an invite, you'll just see it through the EA social. So it's probably going to be the main way of inviting. And the bottom right-hand side, it ends up going red. That way you do know if you have a game invite. Um, so you, I'm presuming you won't know that you've been invited when you're inside the game unless the game concludes and you're not on the bottom right. That's what I was wondering because I was wondering, can you be invited by a friend while you're in a game? Um, but I believe you, it can't. I mean, maybe let's just say otherwise. If a game invitation is received that is cross-platform, the, the invite will only be seen within EA Social. When received, EA Social is display an on-screen notification that enables players to accept or decline. Notifications can appear throughout the game and also while in gameplay, but can only be interacted within gameplay through a specific button and call out to not to fear, interfere with the match being played. Okay, I stand corrected. I read early and i assumed okay so you can see notification inside the game hopefully there's a feature to disable i hope it's not like some notification like a bottom right or top right corner i know in some different resolutions it could appear bigger than normal um but it will say over here it can appear throughout the game but also while in gameplay but can only be interacted by a non-button so i'm presuming the button would be like um whereas what's not really used i mean let's have a new feature i presume it would be like the touchpad or the option button um inside the game so that would be pretty interesting um players also have the option like to see certain notifications in the widgets um so allow them if you display whenever they come in do not show notifications during gameplay which i presume many people will do and never show notifications game invites okay so um the process of sending game invites has been updated for 22 within just EA social it will now replace all existing invite flows across the game for both modes and without cross-platform functionality most notably there'll be two invite flows that will now appear in a game the first flow is called the ea the full ea social invite experience and it's embedded within the volta and pro clubs drop-in the flow brings up the ea social screen which allows players to navigate the full functionality allows players to accept search or request for new friends this invitation also shows whether the target game mode is in cross-platform or not the second invite flow is called the ea social friend picker um this flow feature um across it's featured across the remaining games for the other gamers okay hang on, let's have a look at this okay so you can see for example qb has invited you um to the game and you can see the notification in the bottom right corner as well uh, there was a big issue with um i don't know how it was on p on xbox i never had that many friends on xbox uh, but on ps my friends list i could never see sometimes a friend there it used to be a big issue like people 16 17 18 19 so maybe i shouldn't mess a lie maybe i'll say maybe more nine, 18 19 20 sometimes you couldn't see your friends on the list so hopefully there's no issues like that when the game launches because sometimes you can't see your friend there or if you add a friend so if you add someone and you don't restart your game the name won't appear then you have to kind of both have to restart the game that was a big issue as well as seen above this is a flow refined version of the ea for social experience you'll only be able to select and send an invite with a valid player with your friends list and of course, it doesn't work if you don't have a foot club or you're not introduced to crossplay or you've opted out to crossplay. Very similar to game invites, friend requests now surface any request sent to by another player through the EA Social, as mentioned above. Platform specific friend list and, you, and EA Socials are unique but are both displayed within the friends tab. Okay. When an EA Social friend is received, the location appears, it's interacted, okay, accept or decline. Once accepted, the new year will appear on your list. Okay, fine. Play, this is interesting. Player search. Okay. As previously mentioned, EA Social will... 
Okay, so you search via platforms. So you either have to search through an ER ID or a platform ID. So I suppose if I search Neil Guide, it will, it will show my PS ID, PC ID, oh sorry, Xbox, sorry, or Xbox ID and PS ID, um, and it's not case sensitive. Um, so presuming it will show the names, maybe let's have a look further down. So you can see, okay, here's a second um, image. You can see a friend and you can see if you search for normal, um, except it'll be like a billion of those uh, entries. But let's say if you search Neil Guides, it will say two Neil Guides. If you search it, if you're watching this now and you, this game is out, there'll be two Neil Guides. There'll be the one on PlayStation or the one on Xbox. And you can see, of course, on the left-hand side next to the player's ID, the name of that as well. You have to search them as it is. Okay, so when searching for a friend, it's not case sensitive, but you have to search the exact thing. So if you're searching for a player called EA Sports FIFA, you will be able to you won't be able to find them if you only search for EA Sports FIF. Okay, so this is for everyone else out there that keeps spelling my name wrong. Okay, it's not N E I L, it's N E A L. Um, you know how many times people try to send me an invite, but they spell my name wrong. So if you spell your name, my name wrong, you're not going to find me. So don't forget, if you are going to invite, add your friend, spell their name right. It's going to be so difficult for those. You know, people that got those eyes like X5175959565658 or something like that. Um, when searching, you will see all match entries across the various platforms. And you can see that, for example, over here. Oops, I zoomed in a bit too much over there. So that would be over here. So you can see, like, if you search, so let's say your friend's name is Mega, you can see um, the bottom one, which is, I believe, that's Stadia, or might be PC, and um, which I'm not 100% sure. I think it's Stadia. Um, and then, of course, you have the PlayStation version. Okay. Once you found the person, you have the ability to send them a friend request. If accepted, the players will be able to see it. So you can't send them a message. Interesting. I was wondering, I was wondering if you could send them a message through the EA Social as well, but it appears you can't. Recently met now. This is a very interesting one because sometimes when you're inside the game, you want to message someone, um, or whatever. I don't know. Um, I know, for example, in Golden Goals or some objectives, some people you find them inside the game. Now, on PlayStation, when you're inside a game, you press square and you can see their player online ID. Then you have to go then to the PlayStation settings, find a friend, and search them or go to recent players. But it says here now. This tab is very similar to your friend. It will keep track of the most recent players you're playing with or playing against in FIFA. You'll be able to view the most recent 30 players you competed against or with that are not currently on your EA Social's friend list. So when you're inside the game, you can bring up this menu. Now, don't forget, when you bring up this menu, there might be a thing where it says you have to go back into the game within 30 seconds or you do get disconnected. So just bear that in mind. Um, when people get the game, people always make that mistake where they open that menu up and by mistake they get disconnected. Um, when highlighting setting a player, you have the option to send a friend request, block them, mute them, or report them for an offensive name. And that is, of course, I believe, for the name of the club, I believe. Um, so you've probably, probably seen some of those as well. Um, but you can't message them. Interesting. Unless they're on the same platform, maybe. Maybe if you press triangle and you can see them via the... So maybe if you play a guy that's on PS as well. And you can see what input they are as well. So you can see what platform they're on. I mean, hypothetically speaking, I presume you can see what platform they're on. Interesting. That is very interesting. The reason why I asked is, um, it's going to be interesting to see, for example, how they deal with lag and stuff. Like um, if you're playing with someone on Xbox, let's just say, for example, you have a lot of laggy games. Um, you can see, oh, am I lagging because that player's on Xbox and then... It's cross-platform. That's why it's extra lag. You know, people are going to be thinking that way. So it's interesting to see if you, can, if you can see what platform they're on when you're inside the game. But of course, you can opt in and out. FIFA 22 features will... Um, so FIFA 23 features the same methods of opting in and out of cross-play. Um, same as last year. When a player launched FIFA 23 for the first time, cross-play will be enabled automatically. So you have to change that yourself manually. You can change this by toggling the on-screen notification that appears when you reach the main menu when you first launch the game. Note for online Xbox and Xbox Series X players. Hang on. Note that for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S players, they will only have the cross-play functionality enabled during the first launch launch of the console settings allow crossplay wait they will only have crossplay function enabled during the first launch if their console level settings 
allow it. Okay, so I actually didn't know that. I'm presuming in the Xbox menus themselves, um, they have a settings where you can enable or disable cross-platform. Um, so if you are on Xbox and you're struggling to play cross-platform, maybe there's a setting to introduce that. You can also opt in to the online settings screen. So here you can see, uh, we can see a video of how it is. And you can also see a, a sneak peek of the menus. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I actually design, every year I design um, my own, that's my, that's my old one, that is my, uh, this is going off topic here, that is my FIFA 19 design, which is one of my favourite designs that I left it there. And the year before FIFA 21, I had it in white. And this year I had it in, well, the logo in white, but I had it in like a bluey white kind of uh, text. I designed this all myself, by the way. So sneak peek for me, I can now plan in advance. I think I'm going to go with maybe a black and white color scheme, black and gray, maybe. Um, but let's just watch this on YouTube. Please don't let me open it full screen. Okay, interesting. Interesting color schemes, kind of like a white, a modern. I like it. I like it nice and clean. And of course, to enable it, you go to, so when you're on the main page, you go to customize. And then you head over now to online settings, um, matchmaking options, and then you can enable cross play on or off. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. What I would say is I would just enable it by default. And if, for example, now appropriate location matchmaking, always leave that one on. Um, from my understanding, unless I am unless you're using a VPN or something in particular, it will look at your IP address, which would be your internet location address, and it will match you closer to someone head to head. There's no point leaving this on, on I mean on off, should I say, it should always be on on. You should not have this on no, because there's no reason why you wouldn't want it. You would want someone, for example, who's like nearby to you to match with them, probably a higher chance of getting a better connection. So I would say leave crossplay. Now, if, for example, <coughs> It's going to be interesting how this crossplay really transpires inside the game. Um, I was going to talk about the EA and the cheat. Now, I know, for example, in the PC version of it, there's a lot of issues um, with cheating. I know this because I've seen a lot of issues and a lot of bugs. People are saying the PC version has a lot of cheat. So that was something that I was really worried about. Now, let's say in theory that does happen. You can always turn, let's say there's a glitch or something, you can always turn off crossplay yourself if you don't want to use it. Um, know that players who opt out of cross platform could take potentially longer to find an opponent, as mentioned, as if you're in like, um, like LATAM or you're like in Australia or even if you're in North America and, for example, you have issues with finding someone or South America as well. Um, of course, uh, you can uh, just opt into that and get a larger pool of players to play for. Now, EA anti cheat, EAAC, interesting. In order for a positive, healthy, and fun foot 22 experience. Okay, so this is only for the PC version. Which obviously that's where the cheat most of the cheating is. For those that don't know, um I know from those and I play PC, there's a lot of cheaters for, and I are given you might be wondering how can they cheat? Um it's like for example, let's say you take a green time shot. Uh, when I play on P sometimes, I'm playing against a guy and it's a perfect green time shot every single time. And it's not by he's doing it because he's so efficient, he or she's so efficient. It's rather that he is cheating. So that is why that EA anti-cheat measure is very, very important. So this was a pretty long video, um, or 40 minutes. And to be honest, um, I don't think my voice can last. And that is, people always wonder, yeah, um, why coaching, when I do coaching, why I don't have that many coaching slots available is because coaching is very, very taxing. It's very tedious, especially if you try to be very elaborate or theatrical, I suppose you could say. It does actually take a knock on you and actually it's very exhausting to do coaching. And this is the reason why when you speak non-stop 40 minutes, I should probably have edited this video out um, and probably cut it, taken a break. But interesting. So, of course, pre-order it. Key thing is, is the dates, guys. Don't forget the key thing is, is the dates. Um, the game is coming out on the 30th. That's the official release, the standard version. Um, you can play on earlier on the 27th of September. You can play EA Play on Xbox and you can play on PS for 10 hours. Or you can play in a limited amount of time on Origin. Um, but don't forget, if you start Origin, you then have to... Um, you can't transfer that account over. Um, of course, the most important thing notably has been, of course, the World Cup mode. 
There's a FIFA World Cup for the uh, for of course women in July. Um, they haven't mentioned anything on that, so I don't even know about it. I'm just I just assumed there was um, uh, double World Cup. Interesting how they introduce it, but there's one in December and there's one in July. Um, I believe the foot heroes are just um, maybe not for the women just yet, or maybe they'll it later on. Who knows? Um, I don't even think that's even in. Um, I don't, I don't know to be honest. And then we have the horse, the Foot Heroes. And of course, the Foot Hero, if you pre order before the August the 21st, you will get that item on the 11th of November. So, pre orders are now open. Um, can we pre order the game now? Let's have a quick look. Let's have a pre order. Um, let us buy it on PlayStation. We can see here. And if we compare the editions, you can see. Well, to be honest, don't, not really that much. Yes, dual entitlement version. Thank God. That's one thing I wanted to mention. So if you get, of course, Ultimate Edition, you get a dual entitlement. Three days early access, 4.6k FIFA points, a foot team of the week player item, a limited time World Cup one that don't forget expires 22nd of August, order before August 21st. It says August 22nd here, but it's due 21st. I think it depends on time zones. A one to watch player, untradeable, of course, Mbappe loan car, which is very important. Um, so if you are... Um, a FIFA player, I would probably go ahead and get the Ultimate Edition. I would probably go and get the Ultimate Edition. If I want to go pre-order it now, what is the price? £89.99. What I advise you to do is just buy EA Play. You save 10% anyway, um, and that way you can play the game. Then Now, if you buy EA Play now, you will save 10%, um, but technically EA Play... Okay, this is what I want to mention to you very, very quickly. I'll make a video on this, but from my understanding, EA Play... Very important you mention this. If you buy it now, you're going to be buying it. So let's say you bought on the very last day, August. You have to pay for August. Let's say you bought on a, let's say August the 15th, hypothetically speaking. You have to buy it on August. I think it's £5, I think. Let me, let me just double check this because I don't want to incorrectly say the price. I know EA Play for a year is £20. Okay, here it is. So EA Play for one month is £4.99 or less in dollars. Hang on. Make sure it's the price. Oh, it's cheaper. Yes, not ever, not ever, not everywhere is inflated like the UK. Um, <laughs> of course, without infl ridiculous inflation rates in the UK. Um, okay, here it is. So this is it. Yes. Yeah, so um, you do have it three pound ninety nine a month, or you have it for twenty pound for the year. Now it's not just FIFA. There's other game trials available. Then there's Madden trial as well, and they're like a whole library of games that you can play from as well. So what my best advice is, I'll make a video when it comes out. Is um, it costs eighty? Now if you're going to buy the Ultimate Edition, wait until August, and then what I will do is I will pre-order the game, and then get you get EA Play in August. So you pay three pound ninety nine. Let's just say four pound, and you pay four pound again. So it ends up becoming the same price anyway. The reason why I say do that is if you're going to load FIFA points. Um, you're going to save an additional 10% on all FIFA points. I think it's 10%. So, there's no point just buying a regular version. My uh, my advice is just buy EA Play for the year. It costs £20. You get full... Act no, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. It's yeah, sorry. It's, it's £20. Sorry. £20. Don't forget. Okay, so this is the way I'll do it. Okay. Buy EA Play. Um, which is £20 per year, and that gives you access to the entire year. If you buy FIFA every single year, you're only wasting, in theory, £10 in that deal. And that way you can have access to FIFA points on sale, because with EA Play, let's say, for example, um, you do it for two months. Let's say, okay, you load up 20k FIFA points, and let's say you want to load up 100k again in December, you're going to have to then buy EA Play again. So that's going to be, what, 4 plus 4, that's £12. So at that point, you might as well just buy EA Play for the year. That's what I do. I buy EA Play for the year, you got Loads of other games as well. Um, loads of other game trials. And they've got, of course, they've got in-house library for PlayStation and Xbox. I do check that out as well. Um, buy it for the year. And that way you got discount for FIFA points or whatever. And, of course, you then get the, the game at a discounted rate as well. Or if you are, for example, on a budget, but you really want to buy the Ultimate Edition, there's no reason to buy this version. Just buy EA Play for the month. Pay for this version. Pay for it in September. That way you get discount on FIFA points and you get some free games for effectively the same price. That is what I'd recommend. And don't forget, the key thing is, before the 21st August, you have to pre-order it to make sure you get that Foot Heroes pack. And don't forget, that pack will only come, of course, on the 11th. Anyway, guys, that is information regarding that. Hope you enjoyed it. A bit of a deep dive, went through it. Um, 
went through everything all the information and what i'll do is i'll be making more incremental videos as time goes on with the dates because of course yeah of course i'm going to mention what date things go on just as a final reminder um for the last couple of days is that um number one ea play and ea play pro are different ea play pro is a limited version um, and that is completely different and um, the key thing is the dates here so August 27th in a seven days time you'll see a new features gameplay and hyper motion 2 which I'll make a video on career mode August the 1st which I probably will still make a video on match day experience August 5th bolt on August the 8th and of course the big one FIFA ultimate team on August 11th anyway I hope you enjoyed this video thank you much for watching of course I'll catch you next time peace out guys